Forgot to tell you, I'm gonna be going away for a few weeks. Why is that? I'm being sent to Israel. Some foreign exchange student program. What do you mean some foreign exchange student program? You don't know about this stuff? All right, so me and this Israeli high school student, we're gonna swap places. I'm gonna go to his high school in Israel, and he's gonna go to Branchburg High School. No, I know what a foreign exchange student is. My issue is more with the fact that you already graduated high school. Yeah, I'm 25. How did this happen? I think some wires got crossed. Computer error or something. So, now I'm going to Israel. Do you think I'll have to retake Spanish? I don't know, man. From Absolutely Productions, this is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. The Stone Mill Tavern is back in operation today after a series of fights forced the bar to close early last night. Our Dan Frischno has more. Police shut down the bar in a quarter to ten last night and took 12 people into custody. Witnesses recalled the fight starting after a very small man reportedly asked another man if he could have a sip of his beer, which then escalated after the small man took what one witness remembers hearing, too big of a sip. A group of customers then started chanting, fight, 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 and formed a circle around the two men. A different man, later identified as Marshall Fleming, 46, began dancing in the center of the circle, but was promptly pushed away. Fleming lashed out, tried to dance his way back to the center again, causing more people to push him. Police believe this started a chain reaction of violence quickly spreading throughout the bar. According to witnesses, after one woman left a tip on the counter for the bartender, two patrons began fighting over whether or not the money was a present for them. Another man was spotted punching someone else in the back of the head, then ducking straight into the kitchen and begging the chef for a job. Police arrived at the scene shortly after, and witnessed Steve Etheridge, 27, insisting on fighting others because he hated his new haircut. However, no one took the bait. It took four officers to apprehend the screaming, inconsolable man. Marvin Cross, 31, kept accidentally dropping his phone into his mother's beer, causing the mother to slap her son in the face. Both of them are pressing charges against the other. Jacob Yelton, 24, got so excited about fighting he jumped up and down for 10 minutes, then sprinted out the door and enlisted in the army. And six people assaulted Harris Van Ness after he showed them a magic trick they didn't understand. Van Ness then attempted a disappearing trick, but accidentally reappeared in the middle of an even larger brawl. But not all attendees who were taken into custody were fighting. One unidentified man walked into the corner of the Stone Mill Tavern and had a heart attack. Ann Jankowski, 32, climbed into the tavern's popcorn machine and began slowly rocking herself towards the exit. Police caught her two miles down Amwell Road. Another man, George Parrish, 56, approached the bartender to ask permission to punch someone. After the bartender said no, he then calmly walked to his car and crashed it straight into a telephone pole. No one has been released yet. Another man- This is Branchburg Public Radio. Okay, where did you see that mouse in here? Branchburg resident George Lewis Hayes died today at the age of 94. He was surrounded by his loving family, including his wife of 60 years, Margaret, his daughter, Ellen, his sons, Thomas and Richard, his grandson, Melvin, and his granddaughters, Jacqueline, Rita, and Ellen. Mr. Hayes was known in Branchburg for being the only living person on Earth who never found out that Orson Welles' infamous radio adaptation of H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds was fictional. For the past 80 years, Mr. Hayes had been under the belief that Martians had successfully taken over the world in 1938, and that they continued their reign to this day. Like many people, a 14-year-old Hayes did not hear the part of the broadcast that would have let him know that the broadcast was fictional. But unlike most, when told afterward, he did not believe it. I know what I heard. Mr. Hayes was known to say whenever anyone questioned his belief. For someone who believed that Martians had taken over the planet Earth, Mr. Hayes did not let this affect him. 
He was a loving husband, father, and grandfather. He was the owner of Hayes and Son Lumber, a trusted community staple for over 40 years that he ran with his son Thomas. He fought in World War II and won a Silver Star. He coached numerous Little League Baseball and Pop Warner football teams, and he co-founded the Branchburg Bird Watching Club in 1971. He led, by all accounts, a normal, happy, healthy life. This appears to be because he did not live in fear of what he believed to be his Martian overlords. According to his surviving family, Mr. Hayes considered them to be benevolent conquerors who played no noticeable role in human affairs. His wife remembers him saying, Sure, they did some damage initially, but they don't seem to be interested in that sort of thing now. And the presidents don't seem to pay them much mind, so neither do I. In many ways, Mr. Hayes' refusal to let what he perceived as an 80-year Martian invasion rule his life is a triumph of the human spirit. Besides Mr. Hayes, the latest anyone in Branchburg believed that the Orson Welles' War of the Worlds radio broadcast was real was June 1986, when John and Megan Harrison of 22 Arapahoe Trail both found out on the same day. With the death of George Hayes, there is currently no one alive in Branchburg or anywhere else who remains fooled by Orson Welles. It is truly the end of an era. Services will be held Thursday at Branchburg Funeral Home at 11.30 a.m. Hello? Hey, so, it looks like I'm staying in Israel longer than I thought. Why? I got drafted. I gotta do 32 months in the Israeli army. What? Why do you have to do that? It's mandatory. But not for you. You're a foreign exchange student. I got a letter, though. Throw it out. I can't just throw out a letter. It wouldn't be fair to my other classmates who have to do it. So you're really going to join the Israeli army? Well, I have to, if I want my degree. You already have a degree here. Oh, I don't think anymore. I think it belongs to that Israeli kid who I swap places with, right? How's he doing? Not great. The town can't find him. What do you mean? He ran straight into the woods as soon as he got off the plane. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's been in there for weeks. He tried everything. The principal even came down and tried coaxing him out, but when he didn't, she just suspended him. So we're pretty sure he's still running around in there. People leave a lot of food for him. Wow. Do you think he's training for the U.S. Army? Why would you think that? Because I'm going to be in the Israeli Army. Look, man, it's 3 a.m. here. I'm going back to bed. What a waste of a day. No one called on my ticket at the deli counter. I just stood there like a chump for hours. <sighs> Guess it's no lunch meat for me this week. Just good old bread and mustard will have to do. I didn't even go into the office today. That's not good. I'll work tonight. I don't want my boss to... What the... Who planted a tree in my driveway?! Crap! Oh, boo, the, the, it's like 40 feet tall! Oh, God, where the hell did this come from? Yep, it's definitely an oak tree. Oh, my God, I don't want... How the hell am I going to pull in? This <sighs> is just my luck. Did the town do this? Why would they... I used my driveway! It must have been that awful parks department. When the hell are they going to get a little oversight? Is this eminent domain? Where's my check? Come on. Ah. Is the tree a gift? I don't know anyone this rich. Maybe someone's mad at me. I don't know. No, there has to be some mistake. It's gotta be like a hundred years old. Doesn't seem like anyone else has one in their driveway. Oh man, it's really in there. It's gotta be as big as the Rockefeller tree. I can't drive around it. I just had the driveway repaved, too. That's right, the asphalt company wants their sign next to the driveway for a month. If they see this, they're gonna yell at me. I think I'm playing a trick on them. I'm not. Is that a bird's nest? Is there already a bird's nest? It's like a million eggs in there. 
Oh, God, I hope they're not endangered. One of them dies, I got PETA throwing paint at me. Who put an army ribbon around it? I don't know anyone in the army. If I chop the tree down, people will think I hate the troops. Even a war? God, I don't have time for this. I have so much work to do. Why is there a cross next to it? Whose picture is that? All these candles? Did someone crash into it and die? It's only gone eight hours. Why didn't the deli call on me? Watched a whole ham get shaved down to a nub. Everyone passing me in line. Hey, I'll learn how to speak up. Oh, hey, there's Sue. Hey, Sue! Sue! Do you know who planted this? Oh, you have your headphones in. Probably listening to your favorite song. Must be nice. Oh, God. Where am I going to park? I can't park on the street. I think it's going to snow tomorrow. I have to park in my neighbor's garage again. Yeah, they're going to hate that. There'll be so many leaves. I, I am not raking a single leaf that comes off this tree. I didn't ask for this. I probably will. I'll be out here raking anyway. Can't just pick and choose. I guess I'll have to live with this thing. I mean, it's a gorgeous tree. There's, there's no denying that. It really gives the neighborhood life. I just wish it wasn't in my driveway. I hope my neighbors are home. Let's get back to the scholarships. <clears throat> back in 2007, we lost a very special and unique educator in the Branchburg public school system. Her name was Deborah Lockwood. The recipient of this next award, the Deborah Lockwood Scholarship, was deemed by the faculty to be the senior class student who most embodied Mrs. Lockwood's famous resilience and spirit. But before we announce the winner, Mrs. Lockwood's husband will be delivering a poem he wrote in her honor. Please welcome Mr. Jonathan Lockwood. Thank you. <clears throat> there once was a woman who went totally blind, drinking from a radiator she thought contained wine. She screamed and clawed, she scraped and climbed, living for years in the forest until I called her mine. I loved you, Deborah, with all of my heart. Since the day I saw you attack kids at the park, with sticks and stones you protected the slide, saying it was for Christ to come down in due time. I asked you out, not knowing you'd follow me home. You kept a ten-yard distance, but I knew I'd never be alone. We then soon wed, and you received a teaching degree. But on your very first day, you scratched Matthew McCree. Eight years old, all the lad did was sneeze. But the sound startled you, so used to a life amongst trees. You went away for that procedure, then you came back and you taught. Educated 1,200 students, children who you no longer fought. Just handed them worksheets while you stood and swayed. The children learned about Stalin, and for that you got paid. Until your last day, Deborah, I appreciated thee, till you slipped off a branch and fell from that tree. The love of my life, you now crawl around heaven. I love you, Deborah, from sun up till seven. Uh, thank you, Mr. Lockwood. The winner of this year's Deborah Lockwood Scholarship goes to Jessica Bronzewell. $35 a scholarship in her name. If you've won her award, that means you're just the same. So take that money and use it to Mr. Lockwood, Mr. Lockwood, uh, please, we have a few more scholarships to get through, so why don't you uh, just take your seat, okay? All right. Our next scholarship is from the Rotary Club. Hello? <laughs> Hello? I just got my report card. I'm failing all my classes. I can't read Hebrew and everyone's making fun of me. Can you teach me? Stop crying. I don't know Hebrew. 
Besides, who cares? No, it's horrible. I'm in remedial studies here. They make me wear glasses. <laughs> I'm always nauseous now. I gotta get my grades up. I'm gonna start going for extra help. Don't do that. Just get out of there. I don't want to be a dropout. How would that look when I get home? Besides, I have to do my tour in the army. No, you don't. The other kid didn't even go to school here. Oh, yeah? What's he up to now? He's gone. He walked out of the woods and he was like 300 pounds when he came out. Holy cow! Yeah, he was eating all that food people were leaving for him. Also, all the bushes in the forest are bare now, so I guess he was eating those too. Anyways, he just walked right onto the tarmac and got on another plane, so you can come home now. Hello! He gotta gain 300 pounds and I gotta learn how to read Hebrew! Alright, well, just do whatever you want. He's so big! I can't read! Thanks for listening. Please subscribe to This is Branchburg with Brendan and Corey. They'll be glad you did. <laughs>